Before you assumed the leadership at the Air Force Academy, in the media it was reported some incidents of sexual assault uh, were an issue at uh, the Academy. And you've helped transform, and you're still transforming uh, the Air Force Academy. Could you <coughs> briefly describe uh, how you've really almost single-handedly, with also a great team, helped really instill and institutionalize uh, to prevent women and others from being assaulted or harassed? Well, you're too kind. We're not there yet. But I, I, I'm encouraged. And I'm, I'm encouraged. And I, I, a few uh, weeks ago, I spoke at the National Association of College Directors of Athletics. My, my athletic director, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. Just Please. bear with me. I tend to go on a circuitous, mm -hmm. circuitous route. Um, he said, I don't think the athletic directors get it in spite of Baylor and Stanford and Yale and Florida State and Montana State and all the academies that are in the news and these things. I don't think they get it. So I went up and I said, hey, look. You know, here's, here's the Air Force Academy. There are 3,800 people in this room, and it was, as you could have heard a pin drop like, for the wrong reasons because it, it became uncomfortable. But I started out saying, look, you know, the graduates throwing their hats in the air and jets flying by, and we have all these academic All Americans and good sportsmanship awards. And in the main, our story, our narrative is wonderful. You'd be proud of all of them. And it's only about 1% of our cadets who are kind of clunkers that we have to work on or cut them loose or, or get them turned around. Um, but I said it can still happen to us. And if it can happen to us, shiny academies that care about leaders of character, it can happen to you. And so I showed some of the headlines from, that I walked in on. And, uh, and I said, you know, look, the first step is to own it and say, let's figure out what it is and then figure out what we need to do about it and not just have me talk about it. It needs to be the coaches, the faculty, the Air officers commanding, everybody in the whole place needs to get it and, and own it and put it in context. And so that's what's been encouraging. So we, I said, how do we talk to them about this stuff? And, and you know how things can happen in a big bureaucracy. You may not have bureaucracies where you are. I have the bureaucracy of DOD and the bureaucracy of academe. <laughs> awesome. And, um, but uh, to say, what is it? And it's a spectrum of harm. So when you hear the reports of the academies, which are under great scrutiny, is on the spectrum of harm. It's everything from uh, unwanted touching to forceful penetration to rape. It's the whole spectrum. And so it's an underreported crime, and you want people to be safe to report and, feel, and be, get care, uh, but you want the prevalence to go down. And we are surveyed. We have anonymous surveys for data. And we, we've been closing, I think we're closing the gap between the reports and the prevalence, and we want both to go to zero as much as we can with human beings. So when we started owning it, uh, that's when things started to get better. When I had a provost from a neighboring college say, how did you get your faculty on board? Wow, you noticed. Come out and see what we do and, uh, and know that we take it seriously. I got a new athletic director, honestly, and someone who had served in the Army. He went to West Point, but he's a professional athletic director. He was at RPI for seven years. Dr. Jackson's pretty mad at me for hiring away from him, <laughs> from her. And uh, I called her ma'am for the first five minutes on the phone when I talked to her. If you know Dr. Jackson, she's a very powerful person. But we became peers by the end of the call. But, um, but he's helping us grow, not just in terms of um, Division One sports and how you conduct the business of it, but more importantly, the culture and climate within it to say for the coaches, you're not just here to coach gymnastics, you're here to help develop leaders of character. They're cadets first. This is the ta our responsibility to you is to produce leaders of character. And if you're an athlete, that's great. If you're in the forensics team, if you're on the cyber competition team, that's really nice. But you're a student athlete first, you're a cadet athlete first. And, and so their climate has turned around. And we, and we just talked frankly about it. That's the other thing in a bureaucracy, what I say, how do we talk to them about it? oh, there's not enough time, or I have this program or that program. I go, no, no. How do you talk to them about it? And with this generation and with this issue, and with our generation, people like our boards always say, don't talk about that anymore. It makes us really uncomfortable. And like I told the athletic directors, it makes me uncomfortable too. Uh, I don't like it either, but we have to realize what it is. And so I do these lame you know, examples, but it seems to work. My staff don't like me to use it, but they can't think of anything better. You know that line in Greece? the play and that thing on TV, and at the beginning, and they come back from the summer, and they're singing about the girl he met at the beach, and it's really funny, summer loving, and it's catchy, and they're beautiful and everything, 
But when a line, I can't listen to it anymore, because when a line says, did she put up a fight? And that was funny. Right? And so when I say, look, if you're trying to get to second base and they don't want you to get to, get to second base, that's sexual assault. If you put your hands down their pants, that's sexual assault. Sorry to be coarse and I don't mean to offend you, but we just got to realize what it is. And with this generation, they don't always know what healthy relationships are. Every kid I who comes in, I don't hand halos out, right? So they're good kids, and, and uh, some are privileged, some are not. We have a great American Dream stories, and KT was too kind about me, but we do have the American Dream happening, not just from farm, farm girls from Iowa, but from homeless kids from Compton, California, who play jazz piano by ear, we go from boxing champion, and an Air Force Academy graduate, because somebody mentored him. But that doesn't mean all those kids know what a healthy relationship looks like. They see stuff on the internet, they see porn, they see everything. Look at even in popular culture, daytime TV. They don't know how to ask someone for a date, or can I kiss you, or what's, what's consent? Because they say horrible things to each other on text and don't get the import of it to look someone in the eye and realize what that just meant. And so guess what? If we just talk to them like that, that's helping. And it's generating different conversations. And we do things, best practices from other colleges as well, like having actors portray dating situations. And not in a pornographic way at all. I mean, it's just, I, I sit in the shadows so I don't chill the conversation. This outfit I have on is kind of a barrier to communication. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but it's kind of raw in the language of the age group. But they talk about who was the aggressor in that. What, did anybody ask anything? What were the signals? It's, in fact, this one's called sex signals, but there are other things that we do that are more, more uh, open and honest and candid. And so I'll just wrap it up by saying, when I started out, I said, you know, look, my, I'm, I'm an older parent, so I know how to talk to 13-year-olds, and I know how to talk to heads of state and generals and admirals. I'm not sure if I know how to talk to 20-year-olds. And I said, how do I do that? And they said, like that. Just talk to us. And I think that's what's different about this generation is more dialogue with them. But we, we hold the bar high for them, but we talk to them more about it so they can try to understand. And I think that's what gives me hope that we can understand what a healthy environment is, whether it's your personal boundaries physically or, or religion or orientation. Um, and we have different affinity groups for different cadets. We have affinity group for our, our LGB cadets. We don't have transgender yet, but we're headed that way. And I love it that our LGB colleagues feel safe. My, my last executive officer is gay. He's the best uh, major we had. He just rotated out. His husband is an event coordinator for Cirque du Soleil from South Africa. <laughs> so I think the South African part was the hardest part to figure out. <laughs>